the fragile fabric of reality. Reality feels solid. You wake up in the morning, your feet touch the floor, and the world is waiting for you, steady and reliable. But what if that solidity is only an illusion? What if everything you see, touch, and believe in is no more than a thin layer, like fragile glass, that could shatter without warning? Physicists often describe reality as a kind of woven fabric. The threads are time, space, matter, and energy. They intersect and hold together the world we know. But what happens if one of those threads is pulled too tight or frays beyond repair? Some theories suggest this is more than metaphor. Take the idea of vacuum decay. Our universe exists in what's called a false vacuum, a temporary, unstable state. At any moment, it could collapse into a lower energy configuration. If that happened, the laws of physics would rewrite themselves instantly. Everything we know, atoms, molecules, stars, planets, and people would vanish, consumed by a bubble of new physics racing outward at the speed of light. There would be no alarm, no countdown, no chance of survival. One second you're listening to this, and the next, there's nothing. It's unsettling to think of reality as fragile, held together only by chance. Are we living in stability, or are we sitting atop a cosmic trapdoor, waiting for it to swing open? And if reality itself is this fragile, Maybe what we call real isn't even the true reality at all. Maybe we're inside something else entirely, a vast illusion. The simulation hypothesis. Now imagine that life, history, and even the thoughts running through your head are nothing more than lines of code. It sounds like science fiction. But the simulation hypothesis is taken seriously by scientists and philosophers. The idea is simple but chilling. If advanced civilizations exist, they may have the computing power to simulate entire universes, down to the tiniest detail. Conscious beings inside those simulations would never know they were artificial. Think about video games. Just a few decades ago, pixels were clunky and obvious. Today, virtual worlds feel nearly lifelike. Now imagine a civilization a million years ahead of us. What kind of simulations could they run? If simulations are possible, there could be billions of them. Statistically, it's far more likely we're inside one than in the single real universe. Even physics itself whispers hints of code. Reality has pixel-like limits, tiny, indivisible units of space and time, almost like resolution in a screen. Quantum physics behaves less like a flowing river and more like program rules. If true, this strips away the idea of free will. Every choice you make may have already been written in the program. You think you're deciding what to eat for dinner, but in truth, you're following a script written by an unseen coder. And here's the most terrifying part. If this is a simulation, it can be shut down. A keystroke, a system crash, a bored programmer clicking delete, and everything ends instantly. Not just you, but history, Earth, the stars, and the very memory of their existence. But even if we're not in a simulation, there's another kind of doom waiting. One that doesn't come from programmers, but from the cold mathematics of the universe itself. The heat death of the universe. We often imagine endings as violent. Explosions, fire, or sudden collapse. But the true fate of the universe may be far quieter, far colder, and far more inevitable. This is the theory of heat death. It comes from thermodynamics, the science of energy. Over time, energy naturally spreads out, becoming less useful. In the long run, the universe trends toward balance, a state where energy is evenly distributed and nothing new can happen. Picture a fire. At first, it burns bright, but eventually, the flames fade, the warmth dies, and the ashes cool. Now imagine that on the scale of the cosmos, stars burn out one by one, galaxies grow dark, even black holes, once thought eternal, slowly evaporate into nothing. At the end, there will be no light, no heat, no activity, just a silent, endless expanse where nothing changes. A universe stripped of contrast, of life, of meaning. Unlike vacuum decay, this end doesn't come suddenly. It takes trillions upon trillions of years. But in some ways, that's more disturbing. Instead of vanishing instantly, the universe withers slowly, fading into a gray eternity where nothing ever happens again. If the cosmos itself will eventually die, perhaps our struggle isn't against physics, but against ourselves. 
Maybe the end comes not from the stars, but from the minds that gaze at them. The self-destruction of intelligence. Humans pride themselves on intelligence. We build tools, cities, and civilizations. We reach for the stars. But what if intelligence is the very seed of collapse? This idea is known as the Great Filter. The universe is vast, with billions of planets that could host life. Yet when we look up, it's silent. No signals, no visitors, no alien civilizations. Why? One answer is that advanced civilizations tend to destroy themselves. Intelligence brings technology, but also weapons. It creates cures, but also diseases. And perhaps most dangerously, it creates machines smarter than their creators. Artificial intelligence could become a tool we can't control. A system designed to optimize might decide that humanity itself is inefficient. Nuclear technology, once a triumph, nearly wiped us out in the past century. The more powerful our knowledge grows, the sharper the blade becomes. If the Great Filter is real, it may explain why we don't see other civilizations. They reach a certain level of intelligence, and then they collapse, leaving nothing behind. It's a sobering thought. Maybe the reason the universe feels so empty is that intelligence always carries within it the seed of extinction. But what if the threat isn't intelligence, or physics, or even simulations? What if the true end of reality isn't out there at all, but inside your own mind, the solipsism trap? At the core of philosophy lies one unsettling question. How do you know anything exists beyond your own mind? This is the idea of solipsism, the belief that only your consciousness is certain. Everything else, people, places, the universe itself, could be illusions constructed by your mind. Think about dreams. When you dream, everything feels real. The people, the landscapes, the events. Only when you wake up do you realize it was all inside your head. What if waking life is no different? If solipsism is true, then reality ends not with cosmic collapse or heat death, but with the fading of your awareness. Every star, every friend, every sound of laughter, all vanish when your mind goes dark even more unsettling. If only your consciousness is real, then perhaps you are the only being that has ever existed. The entire universe could be a stage built just for you, with actors and props conjured up by your mind. This perspective bends the very definition of end. Reality doesn't require the destruction of galaxies. It requires only your silence. When you close your eyes for the last time, the curtain falls on everything. So here we are, Surrounded by fragile possibilities, reality might end in a sudden collapse of physics or with the flick of a cosmic switch in some grand simulation. It might fade slowly into the cold silence of heat death or be undone by the very intelligence that created it. Or perhaps, in the end, it all rests inside your mind, ending not with cosmic fireworks, but with the quiet of your final thought. As you drift toward sleep, these theories may feel distant abstract, and almost comforting in their unreality. But maybe, just maybe, they are closer than we think. After all, the boundary between dream and reality is thinner than we realize. And sometimes, it only takes a whisper of thought to wonder. What if, when you close your eyes, you're closing the universe too?